Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now over the years I've looked at various L-band antennas from small GPS style antennas to patch antennas of various sizes. However, this L-band antenna has to be the most thought out, designed and engineered of them all. In this video, we will install the antenna outside and test its performance receiving signals from Inmarsat up at around 1.5 gigahertz. Now this antenna comes from the same person that makes the ice cone feed helix antennas for QA100 that I've shown in the past on the channel. That's Patrick DC8PAT from Germany. There are a couple of options available on the website, which we'll look at in more detail shortly. But the version which I received is the bundle with the 10 turn helix. And as you can see here, it's a bit of a monster and requires these holding struts and to be placed inside this carefully designed tube to keep it straight. The bundle contains all of the mounting brackets, all those parts in orange, so it can be easily mounted onto a pole. The electronics parts like the Sawbird filter and the SDR are available separately from third party suppliers or even the website. The SDR used here is just an example of how this fits together as you will need an SDR that provides a biased T voltage for that Sawbird filter and LNA. Now the Sawbird Plus IO from Nuelec is definitely the best option here to use for L-band. Now the idea here is to assemble all the electronics like this and then place this tube over them. The USB cable will then come through the end cap, keeping all of those components dry and protected. Now the tube also adds support to the SDR and LNA to relieve some of that stress on those SMA to SMA adapters. Now outside we can see how I installed this awesome looking L-band antenna. Each of the sections where the pole goes through are tightened using pre-installed bolts. Now you can tighten these bolts to the point where the antenna stays in place but is still movable, both left and right and up and down. This will help you align the antenna and point it directly at the Inmarsat satellite that you wish to receive. Once it's aligned and you have the strongest signal strength possible, then you can just nip up those bolts on the brackets. But just be careful not to over tighten them. Remember, these parts are actually plastic or 3D printed plastic. Now, you may notice on my install that I have the coax coming out of the rear of my installation, and that's because I didn't have a long enough USB cable to mount the SDR inside the housing. So, inside the black tube, I have the filter and LNA from Nuelec connected to the antenna port, and then I have some LMR400 equivalent coax running off to my conservatory where I have a mini computer connected to my network and it's running AirSpy's spy server. Now, I actually changed the SDR connected to an AirSpy mini as I wanted to have a wider bandwidth, but you can use any SDR which has a bias T option and that can fit inside the tube if you want to mount it remotely. So let's take a look through L-band using SDR Sharp to see how good these signals are. As we scroll through the L-band, we'll come across lots of signals, most of which will be encrypted and you'll not be able to view the data of them. But some signals, however, we can use third-party tools to decode them. As we scroll through, we're seeing a lot of signals which have very good signal-to-noise ratio, meaning this antenna is working extremely well. So how do we know what signal is what and what they are for? Well, a good starting point is looking at the L-band section of the UHF-SATCOM.com website. They have a dedicated page that covers the L-band with a list of frequencies and corresponding satellite. Another option, of course, is to join the Inmarsat Satellite Decoding Facebook group, if you have Facebook, of course, and you can converse with other like-minded users. Now, one example of decoding data would be decoding ACARS data i.e. data messages from aircraft, which are relayed through Inmarsat. You can use a piece of software called Jero to decode these packets of data. Now, ACARS is normally found with either 600 BPS, 1200 BPS, or 10500 BPS, or 10500 BPS transmissions. The 10500 BPS transmissions do actually provide a lot more data, like shown here on the screen. However, you will notice that they're not as strong 
as some of the other signals for ACARs, so having a good antenna is definitely needed. Now another easily decoded transmission is the maritime messages, which relay information relating to maritime warnings, weather and emergency alerts. The messages do take some time to come through, but if you leave it running, you'll get a screen full of messages in no time. Now they will range from weather reports to warnings about piracy, or even emergency reports of men overboard from vessels. Now the application used here is called SkyTow C, and it's a plugin available for SDR Sharp. So there's no audio routing with VB audio cable like you would have to with Jero. Now if you need further information on how to set up these software packages, then I do have a dedicated video on my channel covering these software packages plus much, much more. Now interestingly enough, Jero has a built-in voice decoder, and this can be used to decode voice transmissions that are being relayed over in Mossat. Now I won't show you how to do that as it's highly illegal and kind of unethical. Now something which I've not experienced yet, but maybe you have, and that's broadcast pirates transmitting on FM, playing music through in Mossat. Now, although I've seen clips of this, I've not personally received these signals. So if you have, then let us know down in the comments which in Mossat satellite and roughly what frequency, and maybe even what time of day, see if we can catch one. Now, at the time of organizing to receive this antenna shown in the video, I also got another antenna, but this time it's a left-hand circular polarized as opposed to right-hand circular polarized antenna that we use for direct pointing at InMarsat. Now, why is it left-hand circular polarized? Well, because it's designed to be used with a satellite dish, and when facing an antenna towards a satellite dish, the circular polarization gets reversed. Now, I'll be making another dedicated video on that antenna in the very near future, and we'll be testing how well that works compared to using the antenna shown in this video. Now, as mentioned earlier, there were some options when it comes to ordering this antenna. Now, Patrick sells the bundle, which is what I've shown you here in this video, which includes those orange mounting parts. Now, if you want to use your own method of mounting the antenna, then you can save a little bit of money and purchase this antenna without the brackets. You can even order the antenna to have seven turns on the helix as opposed to 10. But in my opinion, you may as well go for the 10 turn as it will receive better. I would also recommend buying the bundle as the brackets are extremely well made and just make life so much easier when it comes to mounting options. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I'll leave links all down below if you wanna go and check out the website where I got this from and I can guarantee you if you buy one, you will not be disappointed. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.